How can I suck an egg into a bottle? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, combustion pressure ideal gas laws materials you'll need. Hard boiled egg bottle or flask with an opening slightly smaller than the egg's diameter paper. A sheet of computer paper or newspaper will do, matches the procedure. Note, this experiment involves fire and flammable materials, so adult supervision is a must. Peel the hard boiled egg. Tear off a piece of paper that can easily fit into the bottle. And carefully light it on fire and drop it into the bottle. Quickly place the egg on top of the bottle, covering the opening. The flame will burn, heating the air inside the bottle. This causes the air to expand, and some of it will push past the egg to escape from the bottle. Recall from our discussion of the ideal gas law that, for a fixed number of particles and volume, the pressure inside the bottle should increase linearly with increases in temperature. The increased pressure is what pushes the air out. And you may even see the egg shake a little as the air escapes. Then the egg will come to rest, covering the opening. Eventually, the fire will burn up all of the paper, or all of the oxygen inside the bottle. Whichever comes first, and then the air in the bottle will begin to cool. As it cools, the volume it occupies will decrease. Lowering the pressure inside the bottle relative to that outside the bottle. The higher pressure outside the bottle is what pushes the egg through the opening and into the bottle. You can get the egg back out by tilting the bottle upside down and blowing air into the bottle. And then allowing the egg to cover the opening before removing your mouth. Thus you can use the same principle regarding equilibration. Between high and low pressures to force the egg out. Why do some fruits and vegetables turn brown after you cut them? When you cut or drop an apple, potato, or other fruit, some cells leak their contents, exposing all sorts of cellular machinery to air. The key player in the browning of fruits is tyrosinase, an enzyme that is involved in the oxidation of tyrosine specifically and phenols in general. Tyrosinase plays two key roles in the production of melanin, which is a general term for all sorts of pigments found in plants and animals. So once tyrosinase leaks out of the cell, it is exposed to all the oxygen and phenols it needs to start making brown pigments. So what is molasses, then? Molasses is the byproduct of refining sugar cane. In one of the crystallization steps, the brown liquid that is left behind is concentrated into a syrup known as molasses. The molasses you may have used in cooking or baking is from sugar cane. Sugar beet molasses has a lot of other chemicals and it tastes terrible to us. 
Not everyone seems to mind though it's a common additive to animal feed. What is anhydrous? Without water. How can I make jello, R, that glows under a black light? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, fluorescence gels cross-linking materials you'll need. Jello, R, or gelatin powder 1 cup of tonic water 1 cup of water stove top or microwave large bowl pot. For heating on stove top, a black light source. See physical and theoretical chemistry to review how black lights work, the procedure, heat 1 cup of water to a boil. Mix the jello, R, and the hot water into the bowl, and stir the powder in until it dissolves. The hot water helps the gelatin to dissolve and disperse evenly throughout the solution. Gelatin is a form of collagen, see chemistry in the kitchen, and when it cools, the jello, R, will reform cross links between the collagen strands, which is what traps the water inside to create a gel. You'll recall that a gel is solid material that consists of a bonded network of long strand molecules that contain significant amounts of molecules that would otherwise behave as a liquid trapped within the solid network. Add in one cup of tonic water, stir the solution well. And then place it in the refrigerator for about four hours. The tonic water contains a molecule called quinine that will fluoresce a bright blue color when excited with the appropriate wavelengths of light, which can be provided by the black light. Recall that fluorescence takes place when a molecule absorbs light at one wavelength. Relaxes to release a fraction of that energy. And then emits a photon at a longer wavelength, lower energy, than that which was absorbed. Black lights provide light that is at slightly shorter wavelengths, higher energies, than light in the visible spectrum. So it can often excite molecules that will fluoresce in the visible region of the spectrum. When the jello, R, is finished hardening, Take a look at it under the black light. It should glow blue. This is due to the fluorescence of the quinine from the tonic water. This blue glowing color comes from the fluorescence of the quinine molecules. So it will not be affected significantly by the flavor or color of jello, R, that you decided to use. What is an amalgam? An alloy of mercury. How can I make a chicken bone flexible? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, solubility in weak acids materials you'll need. A jar vinegar, enough to fill the jar, a chicken bone. One from a drumstick works best, the procedure, 
obtain a chicken bone, and clean it well. Rinse it with water and remove any remaining skin or meat from the bone. Before you soften the bone, try bending it to make sure it is rigid. Don't break it, but test that it is indeed hard. Fill up the jar with vinegar. And drop your clean bone inside. Cover the jar, just so that your whole house doesn't start smelling like vinegar. And let it sit for about 3 days. Recall that vinegar is a dilute aqueous solution of acetic acid, which is a weak acid. Over a few days, the acetic acid helps to dissolve the calcium in the chicken bone. Since the calcium plays a key role in keeping bones hard, the bone will soften once the calcium is dissolved. Remove the bone, rinse it off with water, and now try bending it again. It should be noticeably more flexible than before. Now you can see that without enough calcium, your bones will not stay strong. This might also provide a good indication of why it's a good idea to brush your teeth. If you leave behind any foods capable of dissolving calcium still on your teeth, your teeth may lose some of their calcium and begin to become weak. What is amorphous? A solid without a repeating, ordered structure. How can I grow a large crystal? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, crystallization solubility materials you'll need. Hot water, from the tap is fine, about 2.5 tablespoons of alum. This is typically found with the spices in the grocery store, it is an ingredient used to make pickles crisp. Its chemical formula is KAL, so for, 212H2O, nylon fishing line or thread, about 15 centimeters. A pencil or ruler two jars spoon coffee filter or paper towels the procedure, pour one half a cup of hot water into a jar. Add a little bit of alum to the water and stir it in. Try to do this before the water cools down too much. As you'll recall, we can expect the alum to be more soluble at higher temperatures. We want to create a saturated solution of alum, but we also want to make sure that all of it dissolves. Continue adding alum until it will not dissolve anymore. And then you can add a little bit more hot water to get the last bit of alum to dissolve. Cover the jar with a coffee filter or paper towel and let it sit overnight. The next day, pour the liquid into a second jar. There should be small crystals left in the bottom of the first jar. The process of pouring the liquid off of the top of the solid crystals is known as decanting. The crystals left behind will serve as the seed crystals to grow a larger crystal of alum. Pick out the largest crystal, or one with a nice shape that you like. Tie the fishing line or thread around the crystal. And tie the other end of the line to a pencil, ruler, or other long flat object. 
adjust the length of the string such that you can use the pencil or ruler to dangle your crystal from the top of the second jar. The one that now contains the liquid, into the liquid without it touching the bottom. Once your crystal is hanging into the solution, all you have to do is sit back and wait for it to grow. This might take several days. If you notice small crystals growing on the sides or bottom of the jar, it would be a good idea to transfer the solution and your single growing crystal into another jar to prevent the alum in solution from crystallizing into several different crystals. This will ensure that you get a nice big crystal. You can feel free to transfer jars as many times as necessary to continue growing your large crystal. History of Chemistry Timeline Year Event 1859 to 1860 The Early Foundations of spectroscopy are established by Gustav Kirchhoff and Robert Bunsen. 1864 The Law of Octaves An important step leading to development of the modern periodic table, is first proposed. 1865 The number of molecules in one mole of a substance is first determined. 1869 Mendeleev publishes the first version of the modern periodic table. Containing 66 elements, and leaving space for yet to be discovered elements. 1869 DNA is First discovered. 1874 The second law of thermodynamics is proposed by Lord Kelvin. 1874 electric current is proposed to be caused by the motion of electrons. 1876 the concept of free energy is introduced, by Josiah Willard Gibbs to explain chemical equilibria. 1877 Ludwig Boltzmann provides a definition of entropy. Along with statistical derivations of several other physical concepts. 1884 Le Chatelier's principle is first introduced. Explaining changes in chemical equilibria upon the introduction of changes in a chemical system. 1887 The photoelectric effect is first discovered. 1888 radio waves are discovered by Heinrich Hertz. 1893 Alfred Werner establishes that some cobalt complexes involve a central cobalt atom bonded to an octahedral arrangement of six ligands, laying the groundwork for the field of coordination chemistry. 1894 noble gases are first discovered. 1895 X-ray radiation is discovered. 1897 the electron is discovered. 1900 Planck's constant is first introduced by Max Planck. 1900 Ernest Rutherford establishes that radioactivity is caused by the decay of atoms. 1901 The Nobel Prizes are awarded for the first time. 1901. What is removed from butter to make clarified butter? Proteins and water. Clarified butter is made by melting regular butter at a low temperature. Three layers will form, the top frothy layer contains the proteins from milk, casein. 
Used to make cheese, the middle layer is water with dissolved milk sugars, like lactose. The bottom layer is pure butter fat or milk fat, which is also known as clarified butter. You can instead heat butter at a low temperature for a long time to remove the water by evaporation. And then decant or filter the butter fat. Clarified butter contains almost no proteins, so it has a very long shelf life. And no lactose, so people who are lactose intolerant can eat it. What is an angstrom? A unit of length used often to describe bond lengths, 1a equals 10 to 10m. How can I make a miniature rocket from a film canister? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, gases and pressure chemical reactions materials you'll need. An empty, plastic 35mm film canister, which are getting more and more rare these days. If you cannot locate one of these, you could try using any other small. Lightweight, plastic container with a lid that easily pops on or off. An Alka-Seltzer, R, or other antacid tablet water the procedure. This experiment should be performed outdoors in an open area. Add about 1 teaspoon of water to the film canister, and leave the lid open. Break the antacid tablet in half and get ready to add it to the container. This step requires you to be quick. Drop the broken antacid tablet into the container. Then quickly close the lid and place the canister on the ground with the cap side down. Stand back a good distance, and wait for the rocket to launch. The Alka-Seltzer, R, will react with the water in a reaction that produces carbon dioxide gas. The pressure of this gas will build and build until it exerts a force so great that it will blast the canister off of the cap, shooting the canister into the air. After about 10 to 15 seconds, the canister will launch into the air. Try repeating this experiment using different ratios of Alka-Seltzer, R to water or using canisters of different types or sizes. You might also compare different brands of antacid tablets. Or different methods for crushing the tablet before you add it to the canister. Compete with your friends to see who can make the rocket that shoots the highest. What does brining do to meat? Soaking meat in a salt solution, the definition of brining. Helps separate the long filaments that make up muscles, myofibril, by dissolving the proteins on their surfaces. With enough salt the actual filaments start to break down, and both effects make the meat seem more tender. Additionally salt allows proteins to hold onto more water, which helps prevent your steak from drying out. What is stevia?
Stevia is a commercial name for an artificial sweetener and is also the common name for the plant that it is extracted from. Stevial is the basic structure of this class of sweetener, but when sugar molecules are attached to stevial, making it stevial glycoside, its sweetness skyrockets to hundreds of times that of regular sugar. This sweetener has been in use for centuries in South and Central America and in Japan since the 1970s. In the United States, it's only been available for a few years as a purified compound. Marketed under the name Trivia, R, raw plant extracts of the stevia plant are not approved for use in the United States. What is an anode? The electrode at which oxidation occurs. How can I make a pH indicator at home? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, extract ions acid slash base chemistry chemical. Indicators solubility and temperature materials you'll need, several leaves of red cabbage blender 1. Coffee filter large jar glasses or clear cups water stovetop or microwave pot or pan you only need some. Not necessarily all. Of the following ingredients, baking soda, 1 to 2 teaspoon, lemon juice, 1 to 2 teaspoon, vinegar, 1 to 2 teaspoon, ammonia, 1 ounce of household variety like what you use for cleaning, antacids, 1 tablet, Alka-Seltzer, R, works, the procedure, cut about 2 cups of cabbage and place it in a blender. Boil water in a pot, and then add boiling water to the cabbage in the blender. Turn on the blender and blend for about 10 minutes. The hot water will extract a pigment called an anthocyanin from the red cabbage. Along with other components. Recall that solubility tends to increase at higher temperatures. Anthocyanins are molecules that will change color depending on the pH of the solution this will serve as our indicator. Filter the plant material out by pouring the solution through a coffee filter and into a large jar. The liquid you obtain should be red slash blue slash purple in appearance. The exact color you observe will depend on the pH of the water you are looking at. Which may be influenced by factors like the ion concentration in your tap water and the other plant components that remain in the solution. Pour the solution into various glasses or clear cups. These will be your individual test beakers where you can test the pH of various substances. Try adding other substances to your solutions and observe how the color changes as they are added. Note that the amount of solution you add to each glass slash cup will influence the amount of each test substance, e. g. Lemon juice you need to add to see a color change. For reference, the list below tells you how the color of your anthocyanin indicator solution should change with pH. Approximate pH color 2 red 4 purple 6 violet 8 blue 10 blue green 12 yellow green.
What is an alkali earth metal? Group 2 of the periodic table, IEB, MG, CA, Senior, BA, RA. Why does lemon juice prevent fruits from browning? If you put lemon juice on your fruit after cutting it to prevent browning. This is an example of that last category of preservative one that slows some enzymatic process. The vitamin C lowers the pH because it is an acid, slowing the enzymes. Polyphenol oxidases and tyrosinases, that cause browning of your fruit. What is an anion? A negatively charged ion. How can I grow crystals of rock candy? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, crystallization and recrystallization solubility materials you'll need. Sugar, 3 cups, water glass jar a pencil string, cotton. 15 centimeters will do, pen, for boiling water, microwave or stovetop, optional, food coloring, optional. Flavoring extracts the procedure, begin by stirring 3 cups of sugar and 1 cup of water into a pen. While stirring frequently, Heat the mixture to a gentle boil. The goal is to just barely get the mixture to its boiling point. And then stop the heating, we don't want to evaporate off too much of the water. Then remove the solution from the heat source. If you want to add food coloring or flavoring, now is a good time to do so. Either way, the candy is made of sugar, so it will still taste fine. Cool the pot containing the solution in the refrigerator until it's just below room temperature. In the meantime, tie the cotton string to the pencil, and place the pencil atop the jar. Allowing the string to dangle down without touching the bottom. You may need to trim the string such that it doesn't touch the bottom of the jar. You may wish to tie a lifesaver candy or other weight to the end of your string to hold it taut. Wet the string and dip it in a little bit of crystalline sugar. Not the sugar you just mixed with water and heated. These sugar crystals will serve as the nucleating sites on which the rock candy from your sugar solution will crystallize. Pour the cool sugar solution into the jar, and hang the pencil and string into the solution. Cover the jar with aluminum foil, a paper towel, or anything else, such that it will not be disturbed. The crystals will take several days, or possibly as long as a week, to grow. Sugar from the solution will continue to crystallize onto the growing crystals on the string. You can check on the crystals occasionally, but you should not bump. Tilt, turn, shake, or move the jar, if possible. The crystals will grow larger if you leave them undisturbed. Once they are done growing, remove your string, 
and your rock candy is ready to eat. How can I inflate a balloon using yeast? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, biochemical slash enzymatic reactions gases materials you'll need. Yeast, 5 to 10 grams powder yeast, a small plastic bottle, preferably about 16 ounces. Or smaller, 1 teaspoon of sugar a balloon warm water the procedure. Add enough water to a small plastic bottle to fill it up about 1 inch. The water needs to be warm for the yeast to do its job. Add about 5 to 10 grams of yeast, one small packet will do, to the bottle, and mix it around well. Yeast is made of fungal microorganisms that will become active when placed in the warm water. Add a teaspoon of sugar to the water. The sugar serves as the food for the yeast microorganisms. They are going to consume it and produce carbon dioxide gas as a byproduct. Wrap the balloon around the open end of the bottle. You may wish to use tape or a tight rubber band to prevent gas from escaping. Let the yeast do their job for about 20 minutes. And the yeast should soon produce enough carbon dioxide gas to start filling up the balloon. This is the same thing that happens when you use yeast to bake bread. The little holes you see in the bread are from the yeast releasing carbon dioxide as it rises. Try repeating the experiment using different amounts of water, sugar, and yeast, and observe the rate at which the balloon inflates. One hypothesis you might test is whether the concentration of sugar in the water affects the rate of carbon dioxide product. You might also try varying the amount of yeast you use. Pay attention to both the rate at which the balloon inflates, and the final volume of gas it reaches. What is an alloy? A mixture of metals, E. G. Bronze, a mixture of zinc and copper. OK last sweetener question what is corn syrup? Corn syrup is made from corn starch either by heating up starch in an acidic water solution or by adding an enzyme to break down the long starch molecules into simpler sugars. Chemically it is mostly maltose, which is a disaccharide, two glucose molecules stuck together. Along with a small amount of larger chains of sugar molecules, oligosaccharides. The high fructose variety is made by treating regular corn syrup with a second enzyme that converts glucose into, you guessed it, fructose. How is refined sugar different from raw sugar? Refined sugar is raw sugar that has been purified by a series of steps. 
that ends with crystallization of a sugar syrup into white sugar crystals. The debate of whether refined sugar is worse for you than raw sugar is ongoing. But chemically refined sugar is just more pure sugar than raw sugar. What is an amplitude? The height, or maximum displacement, of a wave. How can I make glue from milk? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, solubility precipitation filtration materials you'll need. Hot water, from the tap is fine, room temperature water 1 tablespoon. A vinegar 1 half teaspoon baking soda coffee filter cup spoon small bowl tablespoons powdered milk the procedure. Dissolve 2 tablespoons of powdered milk in 1 fourth cup of hot tap water. Mix in 1 tablespoon of vinegar and stir the solution well. Recall that household vinegar is a dilute aqueous solution of acetic acid. At this point the milk should begin to form little blobs of insoluble material, curd. These are a substance called casein, which are a class of proteins found in milk. Proteins are typically soluble in water and aqueous environments. But the acetic acid from the vinegar causes the casein to no longer be soluble in this solution. Position a coffee filter on top of a cup and pour the solution through the filter to collect the curd. To further dry the curd, Try to use the filter to squeeze out any remaining liquid. Dispose of the liquid in the cup, dry the inside of the cup. And then transfer the curd from the filter into the now dry cup. Break the curd into smaller chunks using a spoon. This will help it to mix more readily with the ingredients you will add next. Add 1 teaspoon of hot water, and 1 fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda to the cup. Containing the chopped up curd. The mixture may foam a little from the reaction. Of the baking soda with the remaining vinegar, producing carbon dioxide gas. Stir this mixture, which should eventually become smooth and liquid-like. You may need to add a little more water or baking soda to reach a smooth, even consistency. Now you have your glue. You can use it just like you would any other glue, though you should test it out first. To make sure it's working well before you use it for that science fair project you're finishing up. How can I extract iron from oatmeal or breakfast cereal? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, magnetism food chemistry slash nutrients extraction materials you'll need. OATMEL XPERIMENT iron fortified instant oatmeal packet, Check the label to ensure iron content. Magnet, it's easiest to see the iron if you can find a magnet that is coated or painted white or another light color. Plastic bag or bowl BREKFAST CEREL XPERIMENT magnet for this experiment. 
You will want a magnet you can use to stir a liquid, it's easiest to see the iron if you can find a magnet that is coated or painted white or another light color, plastic bag water large glass jar or beaker the procedure. Oatmeal experiment open the oatmeal packet and empty it into the plastic bag or bowl. Stir the oatmeal with the magnet. You should see small amounts of gray ore. Brown metal collect on the outside of the magnet. This is iron. Iron is commonly added as a mineral supplement to breakfast cereals and other foods. Now you can see that the iron that goes into your diet is the same element that you find in objects made of iron metal, just in much smaller quantities and pieces. Recall that iron is attracted to magnets due to the fact that it is a ferromagnetic material. See atoms and molecules. Br eek fast c e r e l x p e r i m e n t pour one or two cups of breakfast cereal into a plastic bag. Crush the cereal inside the bag using your hands. Pour about one liter of water into the jar or beaker, and add the crushed cereal from the bag to the water. The water will help to extract the iron from the crushed cereal. Whereas the iron bits were looser in the dry oatmeal sample, they tend to be stuck within pieces of cereal. Which is why you need to mechanically crush the cereal and use the water to help extract it. The magnetic interaction wouldn't be strong enough to pull the iron out of the cereal on its own. In a chemistry lab, acids would often be used to help extract metals from a sample but will work fine for our purposes here. Use the magnet to stir the crushed cereal for about 15 minutes. When you remove the magnet from the water, you should see iron filings collected on the magnet. Why do onions make you cry? Sulfonylpropene is the main tear inducing compound. Technical term, lacrimator, released when you slice onions. The most interesting part of this story is that this chemical is not present in onions before you slice them. In fact, the generation of this tear inducing molecule is not a mistake but part of the defense system that plants have developed to deter animals from continuing to eat them. When you cut, or an animal takes a bite of, an onion, an enzyme, a lyonnaise. That is normally safely stored within the plant cells is released and starts to wreak havoc. A lyonnaise converts sulfoxides to sulfonyl groups, which makes you cry like a baby. What is an allotrope? Different arrangements of atoms of a single element, E, G, diamond, and graphite are allotropes of carbon. What is the anti-bonding orbital? Orbitals in which the component atomic orbitals are out of phase, leading to repulsion or destabilization.
What about beet and cane sugar, how are those different? Beet sugar comes from sugar beets. Cane sugar comes from sugar cane. After these two sugars are purified, refined, there is no chemical difference. What is an atom? Smallest unit of a chemical element. What is an atom? Smallest unit of a chemical element. What is an atomic number? Number of protons in an atom. What is an atomic number? Number of protons in an atom. What is an atomic orbital? An equation that describes the probability of finding an electron around a nucleus. What is an atomic orbital? An equation that describes the probability of finding an electron around a nucleus. What is an atomic radius? Half the distance between nuclei of the same element. What is an atomic radius? Half the distance between nuclei of the same element. What is an atomic weight? The average mass of an atom of a given element. What is an atomic weight? The average mass of an atom of a given element. What is the Avogadro's number? The number of particles in one mole, 6.022x1023.
What is the Avogadro's number? The number of particles in one mole, 6.022x1023. What is the azeotrope? A mixture that does not change composition during distillation. What is the azeotrope? A mixture that does not change composition during distillation. What is a band gap? The energy range separating the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band in a semiconductor. What is a band gap? The energy range separating the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band in a semiconductor. What is a barometer? An instrument used to measure pressure. What is a barometer? An instrument used to measure pressure. What is a base? A compound that accepts hydrogen ions, Brinsted Lowry acid, has a pair of available electrons, Lewis, or releases hydroxide ions in solution, Arrhenius. What is a base? A compound that accepts hydrogen ions, Brinsted Lowry acid, has a pair of available electrons, Lewis, or releases hydroxide ions in solution, Arrhenius. What is beta particle? An electron created during nuclear decay reactions. What is beta particle? An electron created during nuclear decay reactions.
What is a bimolecular reaction? A reaction that involves two molecules in the rate determining transition state. What is a bimolecular reaction? A reaction that involves two molecules in the rate determining transition state. Does hot water really freeze faster than cold water? Sometimes. This observation is known as the Mbemba effect, named after the Tanzanian student, who in 1963 resurrected the idea from Aristotle, Francis Bacon, and Rene Descartes. Whether or not this effect can be seen seems to depend on so many variables, the size and shape of the container. The initial temperatures of the two liquids, the method of cooling. On how you define freezing, when the first ice crystal forms, when there's a solid layer on the top. Or when all of the water has frozen solid, that it's really still unclear if this effect is real or not. What is an atomic orbital? An equation that describes the probability of finding an electron around a nucleus. Why does elevation matter for cooking times when I'm boiling water? If you're boiling water in Denver, the temperature of that water will be about 5 degrees Celsius lower than if you were boiling water in Miami, because Denver is about a mile above sea level. There is less atmosphere pushing down on that pot of water than there would be at sea level. The decreased temperature that water boils at means that You'll need to increase cooking times the higher up you go. What is an actactic polymer? A polymer in which the chiral centers are arranged randomly along the chain. What is process accuracy? Closeness of a measurement to the actual or accepted value. What is an atomic weight? The average mass of an atom of a given element. What is an acid? A molecule that has easily removable hydrogen ions, Brinsted Lowry acid can accept a pair of electrons, 
Lewis, or releases hydrogen ions in solution, Arrhenius. What is an alkali? A basic substance, i.e., pH 7. What is an adiabatic? A process that does not absorb or release energy. What is an atomic radius? Half the distance between nuclei of the same element. Are green, oolong, and black teas made from different plants? No, all tea is made from the leaves of a single plant, Camellia sinensis. That statement excludes herbal teas, though, which are more accurately called infusions. Different categories of tea are prepared using different processes of wilting, bruising, and drying the leaves. Green tea is processed within a day or two of harvest, which preserves the natural chemicals of the fresh leaves. Black tea leaves are prepared by an oxidation process at high temperature and humidity, and then dried. Oolong tea is in between green and black, the leaves are left for a few days to wither. After which a short oxidation process is performed. What is absorption? Capture of one material into another, can be a physical or chemical. How does a pressure cooker speed up cooking? If the lower atmospheric pressure in Denver increased cooking times by lowering the boiling point of water. What if we could increase the boiling point of water? That's exactly what a pressure cooker does. Pressure cookers are sealed such that once you start to heat water, the pressure inside the vessel increases. This increase in pressure drives up the boiling point of water because every water molecule that tries to make the transition from water to liquid has a greater force pushing against it. By increasing the pressure inside the pot, pressure cookers can get the boiling point of water up to about 120 degrees Celsius 250 degrees Fahrenheit. With water boiling at a higher temperature, your food cooks faster. What is an atomic number? Number of protons in an atom. What is an aliquot?
a sample taken from a larger amount of a material. Why can't I put raw eggs in the freezer? You can if you take them out of their shells. Raw eggs expand when frozen, which can break the shell, so don't put whole eggs directly into the freezer. What is the activation energy? Difference in energy between the reactants and transition state. Or activated complete, for a chemical reaction or process. What is adsorption? Capture of one material onto the surface of another. What is the azeotrope? A mixture that does not change composition during distillation. What is freezer burn? Freezer burn occurs when frozen food undergoes dehydration due to improper packaging. The humidity level in a freezer is usually quite low, so if food is not stored in airtight packaging, Water in the food can be drawn out into the freezer atmosphere by sublimation. Also, because the food is exposed to air, oxidation can occur. Though at the lower temperatures in a freezer, these reactions are quite slow. Thankfully, although freezer burn looks nasty it's not a food safety concern, it just causes discoloration. What is absolute zero? Lowest theoretical temperature, 0.00 K, minus 273.15 degrees Celsius, minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit. What is an alkali metal? Group 1 of the periodic table, i.e., Li, Na, K, Rb, Cs, Fr. What is a base? A compound that accepts hydrogen ions, Brinsted Lowry acid, has a pair of available electrons, Lewis, or releases hydroxide ions in solution, Arrhenius. What is beta particle?
an electron created during nuclear decay reactions. What is a band gap? The energy range separating the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band in a semiconductor. What is a barometer? An instrument used to measure pressure. How do instant noodles cook so fast? Because they're already cooked. Instant noodles were invented in Japan in the year 1958 by Momofuku Endo, who was working at Nissan Foods. The noodles are flash fried. Creating a dry noodle with a very long shelf life that can be prepared in minutes. What is the Avogadro's number? The number of particles in one mole, 6.022x1023. What is homogenized milk? Homogenized milk is milk that won't separate. Normally cream will separate out from milk, forming a layer at the top of the bottle. This is obviously not ideal, so to prevent the separation from happening. Milk is treated with pressure to break up the little clusters of fat into much, much tinier pieces. These tiny globules of fat don't recombine at an appreciable rate. So the milk remains a single layer throughout its shelf life. If cooking spray is just oil, then how can it have zero calories and no fat? Cooking spray lets you apply a thinner layer of oil than you could. Probably achieved by pouring normal liquid vegetable oil out of a bottle. The FDA states that any food substance with less than 5 calories and less than 0.5 g of fat per serving can be labeled calorie free and fat free, respectively. So manufacturers of cooking spray adjust the recommended serving size to contain less than those limits. As a result, your can of spray contains hundreds of servings go check your pantry if you don't believe it. Does all the alcohol really boil off when I cook with wine? Not really, no. It's common lore that when you add red wine to pasta sauce that the alcohol evaporates rather quickly. This idea is supported by the fact that alcohol has a lower boiling point than water. 
so it should evaporate quickly. People who actually studied this, however, have shown that even after an hour, 25% of the alcohol you added is still in the sauce. If you want a truly non-alcoholic marinara, you need to simmer for at least two and a half hours. What is an atom? Smallest unit of a chemical element. What is a bimolecular reaction? A reaction that involves two molecules in the rate determining transition state. What is an aerosol? Suspension of a solid or a liquid in a gas, E. G. Smoke, fog. What makes fish smell fishy? Fresh fish doesn't smell fishy at all. It's only when proteins and amino acids in fish start to break down. Releasing stinky nitrogen and sulfur compounds, that the funk sets in. There are a few reasons that this sort of smelly decay is more common with fish than with chicken, beef, or pork. Fish frequently eat other fish. So their digestive systems contains enzymes that can break down the proteins found in fish. So if some of these enzymes leak out, or if you're slow to gut your fish, those enzymes will go to work, on its own flesh. Fish also generally have higher levels of unsaturated fats. Which are less stable than saturated fats to oxidation. Acids, like lemon juice, can slow the enzymes down, and convert the amines into less odorous ammonium salts. Which is probably why we're all used to squeezing a lemon wedge on fish. How does non-stick cooking spray work? It's not nearly as magical as you might think. Cooking spray is just regular vegetable oil in spray form. To get it to spray out a fine mist, an emulsifier is added. And the can needs something to act as a propellant, usually alcohol, CO2, or propane. What is black body radiation? Electromagnetic radiation given off by a black body, at room temperature most of this radiation is in the infrared. But at higher temperatures visible light can be emitted. What is black body radiation?
electromagnetic radiation given off by a black body, at room temperature most of this radiation is in the infrared. But at higher temperatures visible light can be emitted. What is the boiling point? Temperature for a given liquid at which its vapor pressure is equal to the external pressure acting on it. What is the boiling point? Temperature for a given liquid at which its vapor pressure is equal to the external pressure acting on it. What is the boiling point elevation? A colligative property, the increase in boiling point of a liquid as a solute is added. What is the boiling point elevation? A colligative property, the increase in boiling point of a liquid as a solute is added. What is a bond angle? The angle relating the orientation of two bonds connecting three atoms. What is a bond angle? The angle relating the orientation of two bonds connecting three atoms. What is a bond length? The distance separating two chemically bonded atoms. What is a bond length? The distance separating two chemically bonded atoms. What is a bond order? Number of pairs of electrons shared by two atoms. What is a bond order? Number of pairs of electrons shared by two atoms. What is a bond strength? A measure of the energy required to break a chemical bond. What is a bond strength?
a measure of the energy required to break a chemical bond.